So in this session, we are going to discuss about the distributed model. So as the name suggests, distributed in the sense, what the data you have, the data must be stored in multiple location. So compared to RDBMS, that means relational database management system, this distributed model is different. Why? Because the RDBMS, whereas relational database management system supports older transaction method, that means central storing of data location. For example, I'll show you an example here. Single server is here. Okay. So for example, I have uh, data right i have a database so in that we have some data consider that this is my database of a college so this database have almost all one lakh student details right one lakh student details what happens if you want to search for a particular candidate this one lakh student details you have to make a comparison and moreover if the data loss happens anything to the system the whole total data will be lost. That means if the system crashes or any software system crashes or any hardware failure crashes, we lost this data. So instead of storing entire data in one location, what we do normally, we divide this data, we divide this one lakh student details into number of databases, like 1000 details in one location, 1000 details in one location, 1000 details in one location like that, will divide the data into multiple databases. Such a design is called as distributed model. So here, see, uh, when we have to store large amount of data, it is not possible to store at one location. Consider Amazon, Google, Flipkart, any web social website, they have many number of users. So all users details, they are not able to store at one location. We don't have that much amount of uh, hard disks or any storage devices. So what they do normally, they keeps on changes in the databases into multiple locations so that if the data loss happens in one location, we get the same data from another location. So we need to store the data on the servers which are connected through network so that the data looks like it should be on a single location. Now this one like student details, what I'm doing, I'm making one uh, 50,000 here, this 50,000 here. So these are the two systems which are having 50, 50,000 amount of data and these two systems are connected through network and However, the people, external user performing any operation, he thought that these two are not separate systems. These two are treated as a single system only. In the background, what the happening is there? What is happening over there? We don't know that one. Only we know that, that the systems are separated, but from which the system in the data is getting, we don't know, right? So that means distributed model, if you have large amount of data, we divide the data and we store the data into multiple location. When you access the data, it looks like some like a single location only. It not looks like multiple locations, right? Now we see the definition of the distributed database. A data distributed database represents multiple interconnected databases. As I said now, previously, these two databases are what? Multiple databases, not only two. If you are want to interested, we make it at 10 databases, 15 databases to store the data. And all those 15 databases are interconnected through a network across several sites connected by a network. Since the databases all are connected, they appear as a single database to the users. So they are in the network, so treated as, as a single database only. Right, so we 15 20 database like data divide. I know, but working mother mela and this on the users can't have okay database on the data was the not the and this on the so this is the main advantages of the distributed database, right? So in the distributed database environment, we have single server or multiple servers. Now consider Amazon, Amazon, what it is a big company, right? So in Amazon, we have some software companies. 
and some online transactions and everything aws cloud technologies etc etc so the amazon is not a single server amazon has a multiple servers so each server should perform one task here consider an example of single server this single server see here this is a server system this is also a, this is a server cpu that means for this server there is no particular monitor and keyboard mouse only one cpu will be there this cpu will be connected through multiple users user number 1 user number 2 user number 3 all these three users are connected to single server so what the transactions they are doing what the transaction they are doing here here also these three transactions will get the data from this server only that means if you have a single amount of data that means if you have less amount of data one server is sufficient here in this case multiple users and single server if the large number of users are there large amount of data is there we go for multiple servers but if you have less amount of data we go with multiple users and a single server only that means multiple users are connected to single cpu that we call it as a single server right so we'll see the definition of the single server in single server entire data reside in one location only that we call it as centralized database what we call we call it as a centralized database that means what consider a college right in a college database right where the administration details will be there in the administration block only but the details which you have in the administration department they must have it examination department they must have it scholarship they must have it library students lecturers so all these people will get the data from which system from the central location of the college system that means in the single server the data will be reside in the one location only but the same data is accessed by multiple people so where is our original data our original data is in server but it is accessed by multiple people this system is called as single server now this single server system is easy to perform aggregate operations aggregate operations is nothing but for what for example i want to find out average marks of the computer students so where i'll get the marks i'll get the marks from the student database right in this student database all the student details are at one location so i can perform the average here so total marks are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 like that all the students are there all student marks are here now i want to add and i want to make it as a total so if the data is at one location addition or um, uh, performing aggregate functions are easy if the data is at multiple locations the aggregation is easy no why because we need to get the data first after that only we can perform the aggregate functions in the distributed model but whereas in the single server all the data is presented in single location so we can easily perform the aggregate operations right next run the database on a single machine that handles all the reads and writes to the data store we prefer this option because it eliminates all complexities than the other options that means what for example if you want to read operation if you want to write operation on the database if it is on a single system it will be easy if it is of multiple system as we discussed in the distributed database it will be somewhat tough why because what operation you want to perform on which table so each and everything we need to take care of but in this pattern easy of reading and writing is easy compared to other things now the last point is graph databases are the obvious category here these work best in the single server configurations if your data usage is mostly about processing aggregates then the single server document or key value database may well be worthwhile because it is easier on applications so as we discussed the key value database document database graph database so this graph database is a what it have some network like uh, uh, like tree 
like we say that tree graph is nothing but what more number of relations are there more number of entities are there so this graph database is suitable for the distributed model whereas key value database is suitable for the single server systems now we have distributed data storage right so as we discussed single server is only useful when you have less amount of data and you can easily perform the aggregate operations and it is developed by using the key value database so this is regarding your single server so if you have lot of data the single server is not suitable so what we need to do we need to go for distribution of data storage that means you are going to divide the data you are going to divide the data among the multiple locations and we can also call it as multiple sites so here we have two methods in the data distribution one is sharding one is replication right so first we go with the sharding so sharding is nothing but dividing the data set from the multiple locations that means multiple database and each data is stored in a computer right that chunk that part is called as sharding so as a definition suggests here sharding is a method for distributing a single data set across multiple databases which can be then stored on multiple machines this allows for the larger data sets to split into smaller chunks and stored in multiple data nodes increasing the total storage capacity of the system so you are now consider here how we have we have a database right so we have a database over here so what i am doing i am dividing this data into three parts i am dividing this data into three parts this is a first shard this is a second shard this is the third shard shard is nothing but a part of data it has from the available data so i am dividing it into three parts this is the first shard this is a second shard this is the third shard shard in the sense it is a component which have some part of the data clear now similarly by distributing the data across multiple machines a shared database can handle more request than a single machine so what the data you have in the shard the data must be divided among the machines also sharding is a form of scaling as known as horizontal scaling or scale out as additional nodes brought on to the shard to load the data horizontal scaling allows for the near limits scalability to handle the big data and intense workloads in contrast vertical scaling refers to the increasing the power of single machine or single server through a more single powerful cpu increased ram and increased storage so here we have a term of horizontal scaling and vertical scaling so scaling is nothing but increasing the capacity of existed one right for example so in this what you have you are dividing the data into three parts one two three that means horizontally you are dividing horizontally in the sense for example if you have three i'm adding one more system to this i'm adding one more system one more node to the node so instead of dividing this into three parts what we do we divide into four parts so that what will happen each shard contains data into four parts if the workload is more what we do we put uh, some other additional things yes or no consider if you are celebrating one occasion at your home what you do the more work will be there will uh, will keep one assistant at one one day that means what to share the workload of regular routines we are adding some person extra right to work for that and will pay some money to them yes or no similarly in this also if the workload is more in the charting we'll add some other extra machines to the existing machines so this is called as horizontal scaling whereas vertical scaling is nothing but whatever the previous three systems are there three machines are there will increase the performance of these three machines only that we call it as vertical scaling that means what what the capacity they have existedly you have to improve the existing machines 
performance. Not only adding extra, extra machine, we increase the performance of existing machines. This we call it as vertical scaling. So horizontal scale is nothing but adding an extra node is called as horizontal scaling. Improve the existing system performance is nothing but vertical scaling. So, sharding is nothing but what? Dividing the data into multiple database sets. Each data set is called as a shard. In this shard, we have two scalings, horizontal scaling and vertical scaling. Scaling in the sense, increasing the capacity of existing systems. So, horizontal is nothing but add extra system. Vertical scaling is nothing but improve the existing system performances. Now, see here one example you have a table of track table so in this track table how many number of uh, rows are there one two three four and five rows are there now i'm dividing this into horizontally i'm dividing this into horizontally so this is central table this is central table i'm dividing the central table into two tables that means two databases this is one database this is one database. So I'm dividing this entire table into two parts. This each part is called as a shard. Now here we did horizontal scaling. Now advantages of sharding. So sharding allows you to scale your database to handle the increased load to a nearly unlimited degree by providing the increased read and write operations, storage capacity and high availabilities. So, what advantage you have with the sharding? So, first advantage is if you are performing horizontal scaling, right? Instead of having three works, three systems to work, if you add one more system, what will happen? The work must be shared. Okay. So, if the work is shared, pressure will, pressure will be less from the three systems. Why? Because one extra system is there. So, now instead of sharing three, we share with the four so the work will be reduced so that the storage capacity will be increased and performance also increased and availability also increases increased read write throughput by distribution the data set across multiple shards both read write operation capacity is increased as long as read write operations are confined to a single shard that means what reading is nothing but uh, taking the data from the database. Writing is nothing but inserting or updating or modifying is called as write operation. As you are performing read and write operations on the database, if the shards are there, shard means what? Less amount of data. So if you have less amount of data, we can easily read and we can easily update. That is nothing but read and write operations so that if you are performing more read and write operations on a shard that will be easy consider if you have a data of one life in previously we considered if you want to read particular thing we want to search entire database but if we have you divide into shards in each shard if you have only thousand records so thousand records we have to read and in that um, from that thousand records we need to update what one record so that will be easy compared to entire database next increased storage capacity if you have 10 kb of data consider now this 10 kb of data i'm dividing into three shards each shard capacity is 5 kb so how much now it will be total 15 kb availability is there if you are more adding some more data, what you do? For example, if you are increasing the capacity to one more 10 KB. So what we do? We'll perform one more 5 KB shard. So as your data is increased, if you shard the data, one more storage system also added to that. So that what happens? Again, the data will be stored into one more location so like this you can increase the number of shards to the existing system so that you can increase the storage capacity now high availability high availability in the sense in one shard if the data is not fit if you you, know, you can easily move on to the next shard if the data is also full we'll go for the next shard if the data also full we go for the next shard. if the data also full you can add the another shard to the existing data and you can store the new data into the new shard. So that high availability is also there in sharding. Now we'll see some of the drawbacks in the sharding technique. So what the sharding technique? 
sharding does come with the several drawbacks, namely overhead in the query result, compilation, complexity, administration, and increase the infrastructure. So first, query overhead. Query overhead is nothing but, for example, I want to retrieve the student details who are from MSCS. Okay. <coughs> MSDS. So this MSDS students may be in shard 1, may be in shard 2, may be in shard 3, may be in shard 4. If you want to execute your query, we need to go for each and every shard for searching of MSDS students. So there what happens? Query will work on more number of shards. So it will go on to the each and every shard. So that the overhead of the query will be in this. Next, complexity of administration. As the storage capacity of shards are increasing, you are increasing, go on, increasing, go on, increasing shards. What will happen? The cooperation between all shards and handling of all shards into like a one database is very hard. Right. For example, on in previous case, we divided this tracking table into two shards. If I divide this tracking table into 10 charts, what we need to do? We need to able to handle this 10 charts and we need to know what data is presented in which shard. That means instead of handling two kids at home is different, handling 10 students at school is different. Yes or no? That means as the strength is increasing schools, the handling also very important. Same thing here also same. If you have more number of shards, you need to increase the shards as the capacity is increasing. But handling also same tough manner. increase the advantages same manner. shards shards A shard A data on the end amount of data on the Mali Oka shard kinko shard ki link up sendi handles capacity kuda equo to the complexity and edi equo to the so that is a one more draw okay of the shard so the next one is increased infrastructure cost so shard and tnt of a database so okay database second on to the of a system loan to the untable of 10 shards on the grading systems in dali 10 systems in dali hala shards increase just so on the infrastructure kuda increase out to the so then cost emo to the echo to the so as we discussed, how many advantages are there? Same number of drawbacks also there with the shard. But the performance-wise, making shard is better. 